mountains thickly covered where huge sharp rocks might pose the greatest danger and where only the bravest surest most deeply arched of human feet will venture where a large stream might flow and flowing perilously having only deep ambition to see itself mighty and powerful bends and curves and dips in many directions making a welcome and easy path for each idle rill and babbling brook each trickle of rain fallen on land that lies sloping. And that stream at last, swelled to a great, fast, flowing body of water, falls over a ledge with a roar, a loudness that is more than the opposite of complete silence. Then rushes over dry, flat land in imperfect curves, curves as if made by a small boy playfully dragging a toy behind him then hugs closely to the paths made, ruthlessly conquering the flat plain, the steep ridge, the grassy bed, all day. All day a stream might flow so, and then winds its way to a gorge in the earth, a basin of measurable depth and breadth, and so collects itself in a pool. Now comes the gloaming, for day will end, and the stream, its flow stilled and gathered up so that trees planted firmly on its banks, their barks white, their trunks bent, their branches covered with leaves, and reaching up, up, are reflected in the depths. Awaits the eye, the hand, the foot, that shall then give all this a meaning 